going to talk about Spring 20 pre-release features and I have signed up for a pre-release org and if you want to do the same if you're watching this video in real time um, go to the URL that I will link in the description and you can sign up for an org and actually play around with all these features that I'm going to talk about. Um, we can also look at re release notes and I'll also link that um, in the description. So let's get started and I'm mostly going to focus on the flow and process builder enhancements but if you go to the release notes you can actually look at it and it's very categorized so it's very easy to go to the enhancements that you are mostly interested about maybe your sales, service, commerce, Einstein, communities whatever you might be interested in you can actually navigate through it very easily and get to your features. So I'm here under customization and under lightning flow. I'm going to talk about most critical updates as well as uh, the process builder enhancements as well. All right, so let's jump right to it. Um, one of the biggest and uh, the most exciting feature is that flow will now support before update and before insert um, updates. So what, the, what does that mean? And if you're familiar with trigger, you are probably already familiar with the concept of before update trigger dot new um, and without having to actually use an insert or update statement you can make updates to the database and that is huge um, and if you're not familiar with trigger I'm actually going to briefly get into it so let's say if you have a lead I'm just gonna open up a lead or it doesn't have to be lead let's say if you have a record and you are looking to make an update on the same record based on some other um, criteria so let's say if I create a lead uh, with industry retail, I want the rating to be hot. That's like a very generic um, standard use case, right? So the first thing that we tend to do is create a process builder or a workflow. And what the process builder will do is if industry is new and or changed, then change the rating to hot. And this could fire on create or update depending on your requirement. And the same thing in trigger we can do is by using trigger.new variable um, before update or before insert and all you need to do is just assign those values you, you'll basically write uh, an if statement where industry is retail and is changed and then you just assign the rating to heart there is no need to do an update action in the process builder whenever you create a node and an action that is consuming one SQL query and one um, DML so and if you have like multiple nodes on the same process builder or even the same object multiple processes you'll very quickly run into 101 errors or um, CPU time limit errors which you probably might have seen if you have a very complex org and uh, so and if you want to know more about that I can make another video but let's focus on the uh, release features that came up so let's do that in a flow and how you can do that in a flow all right so let's gonna go to a flow create a new one from scratch all right so create a new flow and it's going to be auto launched because it's going to be launched automatically and this is where you have to set up or choose um, there are three options now before there were two options and schedule jobs was part of uh, last release window 20 and this one new or updated records flow makes fast field updates and this actually according to release notes um, is 10 times faster than using a process builder um, and the first one is the use all option and you don't always have to go for new or updated records the second option and this is only for very um, specific use cases for example when the records are made record update needs to be made on the same record that you are in so let's say if you are editing lead and you want some updates to happen in the lead itself um, then you will usually go for this option if there are multiple um, if there are child records or parent records then you still follow the first process first option um, so let's do for record is created and updated and all you need to do is select the object that you are interested in in my case I'm gonna say lead and hit done and as you can see the elements actually reduced to only four and that's because you don't want to be using update or insert statement when you are already using before update so because that might 
leading to more issues. So all you need to do is use an assignment and actually assign the values. And of course you want to use a decision. So in our case, we're, we're going to say um, lead industry Um, okay, and industry is retail, and so record variable. This is very similar to, or it, it's like trigger dot new. So record dot we're gonna say industry, and that will actually bring you the record that we are editing or creating. Equals retail. So if industry and always click out of the box because it doesn't always take it uh, if you don't click out of the box and hit done. So that's our decision and let's assign it. And the loop variable loop element is used when you have multiple records or child records and you're looping through a set of records. So um, let's say rating hot. And again, we are going to use the same record variable and say rating equals hot. That's for the first scenario, clicking out of the box. And also let's create another one for the default, default case. When it's not um, retail, we want it to be warm, for example. And say warm, everything else remains the same. And now let's just connect them together. Uh, decision for industry retail we're going to connect it to hot and default will be here and save it lead process flow always give a description for the sake of time I'm going to skip that save and this is also actually nice that it it tells you right here when you look at the flow you don't have to click on the star to figure out what's happening it just I didn't name that and it automatically takes it when lead is created or updated and there are a lot of other enhancements like you don't have to assign variable you don't have to create variables anymore you can just take what let's see if you have a assigning or updating records um, this flow creates variables for you so that's another exciting feature and let's activate it actually to look at how it works and I'm going to also deactivate other flows that I have, like this one, so that they don't collide. And now you can also deactivate right from here. You don't have to go on the list of flows and deactivate it. So that's also another um, enhancement on flow. So let's go to the lead that I was in. And I'm going to change this to something else which is not retail. Save it. And it should immediately change the rating to warm and that was pretty fast um, because it's not making a database uh, st statement there um, and let's change it back to retail and it should immediately change it to hot and this doesn't seem like a lot when you're looking at one process but when you have multiple processes running on the same object and maybe if it's account contact and everything counts so if you are updating a contact and it's updating account and there is another process on account all this combines into one single transaction and that adds up to the CPU time which is why uh, it's very important when you're designing to look at what else is running on the related objects too so being very conscious about that will definitely help you in the long run especially if your org is uh, new and fresh all right um, so that was one of the major enhancements on flows and you can still use the other um, other processes to launch flow for other use cases doesn't mean you don't have to use that process anymore um, and start uh, consolidating your processes which you can actually transfer to the flows to save some CPU time and queries and DMLs um, another flow it's not a flow enhancement but it's more like a critical update which is also which as a good admin, you should need to be familiar with critical updates before actually it happens. So one of the most uh, errors that I always get is, actually, I can open that up for you. For example, something like this. And it's very, it probably is very common 
the flow failed to access the value because it hasn't been set or assigned. And you usually receive this error when you are referring to a process builder. Um, you are, let me actually open up the process builder. So let's say if you are, if you are updating some field on contact based on account, so you're saying contact dot account dot whatever um, lookup values or fields you are referring to. So it's a very simple one and it's probably not an ideal use case, but here's what field reference. I'm saying contact dot account dot owner dot email. So this works out great if you have an account, but let's say if for some reason your account is empty, you will get an error that there is no set defined because, and as a workaround, right now what we need to do is first check if the contact dot account is not null, then you can make this update. Otherwise you're gonna run into that error anytime that's empty. But with this critical update, which is right here, check for null record variables or null values, you will actually not get that error anymore. So let me show you that. I'm gonna go to a contact. So this contact doesn't have an account and I'm just gonna save it. Change something here maybe and save it. So we are getting an unhandled fault exception. Now I'm gonna acti activate that. And whenever you're activating critical update, if you have access to a sandbox, it's always a good idea to do it in a sandbox. And I'm just going to save it now after activating that. And there you go. So we don't need to worry about checking that null hand, null exception. Um, and speaking of critical updates, there is another one more update where uh, the flow actually will can be run in system mode. What, do, what does that mean? Um, I can link you the critical update link, but um, if you have seen the errors where if you're referring to a field on a screen flow and if the user doesn't have access to that field, you get something very similar to um, this error right here. And it's a very similar error where it says the current owner doesn't have access to this field. And But with winter 20, or sorry, spring 20, you can actually uh, run the flow in system mode, which is right here, run flows without worrying about user permission with system mode. So you can actually say, and this is applicable for screen flow. So even if the user doesn't have access, um, they can run the flow and not run into that error. Okay, um, let's look at another feature on flows itself, which is uh, being able to get values from multiple uh, step down. So what I mean by that is, I'm gonna create a new flow and let's say, uh, sure, we'll pick screen flow this time. Um, what I want to show is something that here doesn't matter which flow. I'm just gonna say test and resource type. I'm quickly going over this because I want to show you the assignment part. So let's say if you have a test variable and you want to assign it with variable of uh, contact. Creating contact. Okay. Okay, so what I'm getting at is, um, let's say if you have a field on contact, same example, an email field, and you want to access contact.account.owner.email, um, you can actually do that from right here now. So you can see we have this carrot, which is new, and all you need to do is, just like process builder that we already had, account.ownerid.email, for example. And there, you can very well use formula field for such scenarios, but, and you can also search for it like this. Um, 
but sometimes you can't use formula field because for example you want an email field of email type to be able to send email to that email address you will have to create a field and actually populate it using a flow or a process builder but this is how this is a very nice enhancement as well so we're just gonna skip that okay test fair and um, another enhancement which is around the screen flow is that you can actually um, just screen when you create a variable on the screen flow so I'm just gonna create an email type variable before um, spring 20 if you want to refer to this variable in the same screen you would have to exit out of the screen and then come back to be able to access that variable so I'm just gonna pretend that I want to write a validation here so I'm just gonna validate input on a different one and right here we have access to now test email or var, var email so there, there you go um, this wasn't possible that's pretty cool uh, so this is one more uh, and this was an existing issue with process builder where it tries to update the same parent so let's say if you have a contact updating an account and if you update multiple multiple contacts they all try to update the same account um, and you run into an issue called duplicate update which is now fixed so as per uh, as per the release notes um, you will not be getting that error anymore and you can check that out under the flow management so flow management has a lot of um, updates related um, stuff so here this one so you will not get into the 12 duplicated records issue anymore and I've seen this in one of my orgs um, so that's exciting um, another one is you can you have uh, you can actually now generate valid HTML when using hyperlink I went ahead and tested um, using BR so let's if I want to update a field with new line formula field it still doesn't work um, but the the release note specifically talks about hyperlink formula field so I still can't have these in new lines and there are hacks around it but this still doesn't work so hopefully that will some that will be something that gets resolved in next releases okay that's all I had in terms of flow updates and there are quite a few other updates uh, enhancements um, on the lightning app builder um, making more mobile mobile efficient pages um, you can now include more more than 25 which is uh, 100 components on the home page um, and there are other enhancements in Einstein prediction builder so Einstein prediction builder is now free uh, one prediction is free in any org you can create up to nine but you can only activate one create up to ten and activate one so definitely if you have an access to prediction builder go check it out it's really exciting um, and obviously based on your data there are trailheads around it thank you so, so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions or if i missed anything and um, if you want me to make another video on something else thank you